I'm Jessica Minton for Ivy Times TV, and I'm joined by Jonathan Corpina from Meridian, who's going to give us a preview of next week's economic calendar. Jonathan, it's good to see you again. Thank you for joining me. So next Friday, all eyes are on that GDP number. What do you predict we'll see happen? Wow. So, you know, predicting of, of economic data that comes out of Washington. What we've seen over time is that uh, the economic data that we've been seeing on an overall basis has been quite conflicting. So when we get down to this GDP, it's, it's towards the end of the week. So we're going to have a lot of data uh, throughout the week that's going to try to gauge our sentiment as to where we're going to get towards the GDP number. I kind of think that, uh, that we're going to still see the same um, uh, uh, variations in the economic data that we've seen all along. We're going to have some that are going to hit the mark. We're going to have some that are going to miss the mark. And that's going to add once again to the volatility that we've seen in our markets. If you look at the way our markets have traded on days of economic data, it's been quite uncertain. Numbers come out in the morning. It takes the market a little while to find its spot. And then it trades from there. Unfortunately, We've got a lot of other factors that have been playing to our markets right now that have been putting some pressure on our markets. So next week, I think we're going to start seeing more of the same that we've seen before in the past. Just throw in the factor that we're going to have earnings season coupled on top of that, that might really trump the economic news that we normally follow. Something that I usually think about is, say, with fourth quarter GDP from 2012, um, you know, it didn't come in as well, but it is revised again later. Is this something that we should really look to when we see that number, or should we be more focused on when it is revised and we see that actual number? So when we see that type of revision that's that's uh, brought into play, it kind of throws a little bit of a curveball because you're trying to forecast where we are and where we're going to be, and now you get revisions that kind of pull you back into what's already happened. I think we're probably going to start seeing uh, some of the same types of patterns. Hopefully we do see, uh, uh, if there are revisions, ones that are more in line to expectations that we've seen before in the past or, or um, the way the the revisions have played out before in the past, but I think what we really need to see now is something that's going to provide us just a little bit more clarity as to how the next few weeks, months, uh, quarters are really going to play out in our economy. The way the markets have been uh, affected by earnings season and economic data, and that's just stuff here domestically, that's discounting any European, um, Cyprus, Nor uh, North Korea, any of these other headlines. But the way the markets have traded off of this right now, it just seems like investor sentiment has, uh, has, has moved to a, a level where money is coming off the table, risk is coming off the table, and the incentive to get back into this market isn't really happening just yet. We see big swings down, we see big swings up. I don't feel that's very healthy for our markets. Yes, at the end of the day, we might see a, a three to four point vary, uh, percentage variation from your portfolio from the previous month. And we had a great uh, quarter, excuse me, we had a great quarter of up 10 to 13% in that one. But that's not healthy for what we really need. What we really need now is a little bit more stability, a nice slower pace to growth than what, we're, uh, than what we've seen the market move in. Consumer spending is a huge chunk, obviously, of GDP, and we ha did see that retail sales number come in below estimates. After the fiscal cliff and then tax hikes and then the sequester, is first quarter GDP enough time to basically show us how this is all beginning to affect consumers? I, I don't think we're there just yet. I think um, people are still trying to navigate the waters of the effects of um, some of the, 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 the plans and programs that have been put in place over the last four months. It's going to take time for people to really feel comfortable with it. And comfortable meaning not whether they're, um, whether it's working to their fiscal spending or whether it's working how it's affecting their paycheck. Just comfortable saying, okay, I know where I am. I know where I'm going to be. I know how this is going to play out as far as my income and my spending is concerned. Investors aren't there just yet. Um, you know, we can throw Obamacare in there. That, that, that'll affect more um, time points down the road. But investors need... They want to have their, their good grasp on where they are. And I think at this point right now, we're still too early into, uh, into the year to truly see the effects and how people are spending their money. But we do see the fact that I think people are becoming a little bit more comfortable in where they are uh, financially. We've spoken previously about um, investors buying new homes, applying for mortgages, getting mortgages that they probably didn't think they could have get six months, nine months, a year ago. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel. I think, once again, it's just going to take investors a little more time um, to continue to feel more comfortable putting that money back into our economy. And finally, the Fed did mention in their Beige Book that was released the other day that the economy is growing at a moderate pace. And then they also said not to focus too much on the data. But 
with this GDP number that is coming out, is this really going to show what is going on and that we should focus on the data more? Right. So, and that's one of the biggest complaints is that the numbers really, uh, the top line numbers really don't show the, the meat and potatoes of what we really need to look at. I think everyone looks at these numbers differently and you can talk to, you know, the economists and analysts across the board. It's all how you dissect these numbers that come through and especially when we talk about the job numbers and we see that top unemployment number, but what are the sectors that have really benefited the most? What are the sectors that are lagging behind? So when we when we peel it down to the GDP, I think it's going to take a little bit of time for investors to, to to pull away the layers there to find out, okay, well, where is the diamond and where is the coal here? Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much.